Hello everybody and welcome back to the Alien vs Predator Galaxy podcast. This is Aaron Percival aka Corporal Hicks and joining me as always are my usual partners in crime or hunting partners for this episode. I need I need to try and get better at uh, having themed things prepared for those ones. But yes. my first regular hunting partner is uh, Adam Zeller aka Ridgetop. And joining us for his first episode of 2023. Okay. Is Eric Adams, otherwise known as Xenomorphin, on our forums. I mean, and to be fair, this is only our second episode of 2023 anyway. But it has been a little while since you've been on with us, hasn't it? Was it pretty has. last? Oh, I think I did was one since then, but yeah, it's been a while. You can well, do the books and the interviews with the actors and things. Yeah, lots of... Prey... Yeah, lots of random ass ones. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, it's nice to have you back, Eric. Yeah, it's good to be back. How have you been? OG hunting party. I've been um, financially destitute because I've had to shell out for a new computer. But um, <laughs> yeah, Eric, no, I'm, I'm in a with new the joy straight away. Yes, I'm in a new. I'm facing the way of the room, so I'm. Um, this is me from now on. We're, we're all in a new mindset for now. Except for Adam with his awesome AVBG cushions down there, <laughs> <laughs> they're great. I love them. That my they're my little. Well, this you is can maybe find PG. them on Tee Public. Every yeah, day. yeah. So support support the website. <laughs> order pillows from Tee Public. Yeah. There's t-shirts as well. <laughs> but yes, here today we're not going to speak about t-shirts. I mean, we no. could, but no. What are we going to talk about, Aaron? Thieved, well, thieved. That's the wrong word there. Stolen. Body armor is what we're going to be talking about today because there is a thankfully not stolen artwork. Yeah, well, Um. yes, (laughs) there there is a human running around the galaxy stealing all the predators' shit. What is that about? Including their dreadlocks, weirdly, which is not clarified, but yeah, that I don't (laughs) remember actually. (laughs) Well, they're attached to the helmet. Yes, it is. What? Oh my god! <laughs> Doesn't make sense. I, I hadn't noticed that. Yes, but okay. yes, it, it elaborate for the the uninitiated okay. who probably so, haven't read the video title. We <laughs> are mean? talking Marvel's very first Predator arc, aka Day of the Hunter. I think it is Day of the Hunter. Yes, indeed. So now, just just to show where it was talking about, that's from the very opening scene of the comic, in which our main character takes off her helmet, and it indeed has the dreadlocks on it. No apparent reason, unless she's really wow. into wearing their scalps. On so the I, 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 I I missed that. <laughs> um, yeah, and and we're going into this. I have no idea what these boys think of the comic. Um. Eric, they both only just finished reading them, from what I remember, uh, because Adam doesn't like to read them issue by issue. I think you're missing an experience hey, there, brother. You said you read them um, close to when we start yourself, just so they can be like fresh in your mind, too. But yeah, with the comics, oftentimes um, I will wait until the whole run is complete, and then I'll just read through all of them. With this one, I read through... A couple of the first issues and then i just decided to wait for the rest uh with the alien ones i read them all um issue by issue and uh i because of the problems with the first two arcs i i was like uh maybe i'll just wait for the next one but <laughs> same thing with the alien arc i've read the first two issues of the new one and i really enjoyed that one so i'm sure that'll be one of our next reviews after this um but yeah i uh, read through all of this last night and uh yeah well should we just get into it like yeah well well do do us a quick rundown of the plot first so um we have a renegade human uh theta or you guys might call her theta maybe um i went theta for this either or tomato tomato right Uh, yeah but um so she uh her parents were killed when she was young by a predator and uh, she is on a revenge quest seeking the specific predator that was responsible for uh, her being an orphan. 
So she has the ship that she grew up on that her parents used to scout out a potential new colony world, but her parents and a number of the scientists who were also on the ship were killed. And so she's kind of, um, her only companion is really the shipboard AI. And she is uh, hunting down the predators, collecting their gear, wearing their armor. And she's racked up quite a kill count. Uh, she says 26 predators uh, she's killed in total. Um, By but yeah, that's comic, I think that one pretty, pretty much the setup for the plot. Yeah, so uh, basically, yeah, she's hunting, trying to hunt down this one specific predator. Uh, the ship's falling apart, so she has to go to a depot of where the, the company that owns this ship that she's basically stolen from, and everything just goes to pot because it turns out the predators have been tracking her and realize that she will be going to specific ports, possibly owned by this company. And um, she finally comes face to face with the pre- uh, with the predator. What's the after. company name again? A Star Industries, I think it is. Okay, so yeah, a new new corporation. If you're if you're thinking this is the alien universe, I mean, this is this is set in the future. It's like the 2050s. Yeah, um, 2056, I think, is when it starts. Yeah. But there is interstellar travel. There's no direct allusions to the alien universe, but um, no. which it is always feels the same. Yeah, I mean, we don't get too many Predator future stories, right? I mean, you do have Concrete Jungle, which is like. 2020s 2030s or something something um and then some of the short stories in uh if it bleeds and eyes of the demon um forever midnight and flesh and blood as well yeah but um yeah typically it stands alone it stands alone Uh, well it it not 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 standalone we'll just give examples it's a very infrequently visited time frame for the predator franchise yeah so um, before we dig into specifics, then um, we'll do our quick and dirty summaries. Uh, Eric, you can lead us off on this one, brother. Um, <clears throat> well, um, I'm usually one that's like uh, predator comic. Um, I didn't mind this one. I had fun with this one. Not flawless. Yes, there are some plot holes in it, um, but they're nothing which detracted from my enjoyment of it. It's Nothing particularly clever. It's, uh, you know, someone's on a... It's the Predator equivalent of Batman. It, they're just off on a vengeance quest, and it's uh, they've got to survive it. And there's one particular Predator they're looking for, and um, it's very A to B, so don't look for much in the way of character development, nothing like that. But um, just as a, a straight adventure, yeah, it's, it's fun. I liked it. I didn't mind it. So I'd say... Um, oh! Um, The artwork is an interesting juxtaposition of um, like Mike Mignola, Hellboy, Silhouette-style art, and some scenes when it's close up do a lot of detail. It's an interesting juxtaposition. Um, But yeah, I'd say around about 7 out of 10. It was was fun. I will will probably not mind rereading it in a year or two um it's 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 fun it did the job um only thing i would say is that it has the same problem as any predator story set in the future which is their technology feels like it's stagnated there's nothing new there because you think well even in 20 years human technology progresses quite a bit in this many years the human technology has progressed and yet the predator looks like it's just stepped out of the 1980s um but that's something all those stories have an issue with um you could have set it on like an ocean going ship been the same principles but as a story as a comic story it's a decent predator comic story so yeah i'd say around seven out of ten okay that's fair adam I think I'd probably fall right where, where you do, Eric, at about a 7 out of 10. Um, it's a solid start for Marvel with Predator, but after the Alien first and second arc, I mean, I see that as a as an absolute win, personally. Yes. <laughs> like, I'm happy about that. Uh, the artwork is much uh, improved over those first two Alien arcs. Um, it's kind of semi-stylized. It reminded me a lot of uh, the first of the Hunters comics, the the last series that Dark Horse did with predator 
um, where it's not like cartoony or anything, but the, the people are a bit stylized. It's um, very comic. Yeah. 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 The Predators looked fantastic, though. The ships look great. The uh, different planets we visit are interesting. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a fun ride. Um, we The characters, even beyond Theta, um, I mean, one of them, there's only one other survivor besides her um and spoilers, spoilers right um but i i do feel like he'll probably play a role in the next one moving forward so this is a good setup like i'm i'm intrigued and i'm i'm ready to kind of go along with this you know um there's definitely been some comparisons to machiko with her character mm. um but i thought machiko was cool so like it's uh i'm down for it you know um 26 predators is a lot to have killed uh so there have been some that have also been saying like this doesn't feel earned and how could she you know do this but it's she makes it clear that like a lot of it's because she's been using their weaponry and their technology and she couldn't really do a stand-up fight with one if she didn't have that um it's basically it's it's like nolan out of predators if he hadn't gone insane it's the similar kind of concept (laughs) yeah Okay, so I'm generally in the same vein as you boys. You know, I thought it was a really enjoyable read, very solid read. I'd say, yeah, probably seven out of ten. And most of my notes are I like, I enjoy, I dig. And there are lots of elements in there that, again, I I really do enjoy and, and make this comic fun. But there is two very big dark clouds hanging over this comic that do bring it down a peg or two for me. And that is like Adam says, <laughs> Marvel wants Machiko, but they want Machiko without having the time to do AVP. The first story. Um, they're jumping straight to war and a lot of her theta's badassery in this does not feel earned. It, it feels like no. Marvel trying to do DC studios and play catch up with them. You know, it's, it's Marvel trying to do uh, predator hunters without having done big game and uh, bad blood and stuff like that. Um, so in, in that regard, yes, it, it doesn't really feel earned. And the treatment of the predators in this <sighs> brings it down again, a peg or two for me. You know, this is a single six issue run. You Granted, it's six issues. You know, that's two more than Dark Horse tends to do. But we see her kill... One, two, three, four predators with another one kill, uh, with the Astar employees killing one themselves. That's nearly one per issue. You know, Dark Horse, it tended to be a single predator (laughs) um, per story arc, and, you know, it was hard for them to be killed. So they are severely underpowered in, in this run, which is a huge problem because, for the most part, when we come to these series, we come for the creatures and then yes we may then end up loving the characters but those series has earned those so hunters would have not been as satisfying as it was were it not for the fact we'd experienced them surviving their own encounters with with their respective predators so that's that's really the big downfall of this series for me it should it's the it's the um it breaks the show don't tell rule in writing because it just yeah, said, we, we killed them. So you're there, for, but you don't feel like you you've seen them do yes. something somebody else couldn't have done. Which I th- I also think is really annoying. Or but Adam mentioned, you know, that we have this survivor that seems like he's going to then go off and play a big part. By the end of the comic, I I was like, yes, this is the setup. You know that this is the future of this particular run, and I feel like I didn't need to have Theta go and kill twenty six predators to then be at this at this point. You know, it should have been she gets battered surviving the first predator, and then the story then sets off with her going to try and um, try and capture this. It will take vengeance against this one specific predator because at the end of this, it's like she's killed the one she wants. Oh, what what we're gonna go do? Oh, there's plenty more predators. Let's just go all of them. Yeah, yeah, let's go murder all those. It's like, yeah, no. So yeah, go genocide. 
Don't yeah, get she me was wrong. after a specific one, and she was disappointed when she ended up killing ones mm. that weren't that one. Mm. Um, so yeah, it did feel a bit odd for her to finally get what she wanted, and then like, yeah, let's just kill them all, whatever. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I was, I was expecting the story to play around with the whole, you know, what happens to people who just define themselves by vengeance thing, and the fact that thing. she is wearing parts of them in the same way as they would wear trophies. It didn't explore that. Like, I yeah. thought when uh, the uh, the the final confrontation, spoiler alert, yes, it's the one she's been after all those years, I thought you were going to have something communicated by she realises she has turned into it. In the same way as in Terminator 2, Sarah Connor goes after Miles Dyson and it takes her son pointing out, you're becoming like a Terminator. I thought it was going to do something along those lines. Um, doesn't mean to say it would have been better or worse, but I was expecting it to do that. And because it didn't do that, it felt very much more A to B. Gauntlet run, it wasn't trying to be anything more than that, which you could say is a wasted opportunity. I think there's going to be room to do that in the future, because we've also got Probably. to remember that these... Yes, the next Predator we're going to get is going to say Predator 1 on it again, but they are an overarching story you know we know theta is going to be in it um so it is in in some ways an ongoing but like the the story her character trajectory in this one seemed to be more about not being on her own you know there's a lot of early emphasis put on the fact that she has a bit of survivor's guilt she has a bit of um, abandonment issues you know with the fact that her Everybody around her died, but she was begging her mother not to leave when she went back to death. You know, when uh, the AI, whose name I'm currently blanking on. Oh, it's just um, it's just Sandy because it's the Sandy. Sand, yes, it's it. the Sand Piper is the ship, so yeah. she nicknamed it Sandy. Yeah. So when when Sandy has to like sort of turn himself off to conserve power, you know, she's all panicky over that, and then it ends with her finally having this companion. You know. It's not that it's not the meatiest of of character arcs, should we say, or character no. journeys, because it's not really on her to improve or better herself. It's just a, a situational thing. But th that's what this one felt more like to me. I, I felt that was kind of I don't know if it was deliberate, but because of the dialogue between her and the ship AI. Which I didn't mind. It was, you know, well done for what it was. Um, but I did feel it was whether unconsciously or not, but it felt like the writer was taking a lot from um, Zula Hendrix and Davies. It felt like that kind of a dynamic, except it was a ship as opposed to a synthetic, but there was a similar kind of dynamic there for me. I just don't feel I, like I, you know, a... I don't... Sorry, go ahead. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel that one myself because Davis, okay. and, uh, Davis and Zula went down at a weird... I say weird as in because I can't define it. Um, an an untip an atypical romantic arc is the yeah. No, I'm not talking about the story, up, but in terms of just the initial dynamic, it kind of felt but similar. The, but, yeah. For for these guys, for Sandy and Theta, it, it felt very family to me mm -hmm. more than more than anything. But anyway, Adam, sorry, you were you were going to say. Um, I had that thought too, Eric. Yeah, I mean, it might not have developed into similar things, but I mean, eventually, um, what's Davis, Zula's companion, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm getting over a cold. Brain's a little foggy today, but um, so yeah, I had the thought because he was not in an android body. Um, for the whole time either he would like his ai would be in a ship and there's even like a, a joking between them like oh i wouldn't leave you behind for a newer ship or anything um but maybe <laughs> that'll that. be a factor yeah. of, of the story you know we don't know but there's definitely a bond uh between them and uh it's it was interesting you know between like a ship ai and and a human seeing that like the ai essentially raised her from childhood after she was orphaned um but yeah, I mean, there, there's so her character was compelling to me. It's not like she had no struggles. You know, there's the scene where she gets drunk, 
And uh, at a, at a I, I moment... hated that though, <laughs> but because that's how they put her on an even keel with the predator. That's how the predator beat her. They had to make her drunk. That was one of the things in this oh, that I didn't drunk. like. <laughs> well, she, according to her, she's fucking off her tits um, with the way she talks. Well, she's hiccuping, but she's not. Well, no, no. I mean, her her, her, her inner yeah. monologuing about her state. It's it's like that guy. It's you know that sixteen mm. year old who's just gone and got a can of cider on the the cricket pitch, and he thinks he's most <laughs> most drunk anybody's ever been in their life. Yeah. But there's also like there's a nightmare sequence as well with her mother, and it kind of reminded me of some of those earlier Aliens comics with Newt, the mm. same kind of kind of thing. I, even though it didn't go very long, but it it reminded. I know the the intention was to be horror. You know, it's it's her mother, and it says, "Oh, why did but you it was leave kind me? Of funny. You're killed." And then it's uh, and the mother is like this human predator hybrid thing, and it goes rah at the script. It's meant to be horror. But because of the way it was done, I'm sure it was unintentional, but all I could think of was that scene out of the third Jurassic Park film where it's the Alan, Velociraptor Alan. and it says Alan. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I could think of when I saw it. I I I did actually quite like her being traumatized though. You know, I, I like it when these encounters do leave a psychological impact on on the characters. So that was consequences. Yeah. I it, Aside from the fact that I, I wish there would have been an, this comic could have been about an earlier hunt and, and bloody bloody, but I actually really like Theta as, as a character. You know, I'm always intrigued by these vengeance storylines and to see how they shape the characters. Because even if it is all about getting that kill, you know, it is about murdering something. Um, I actually found her really reasonable as, as a character in, you know, the sort of guilt that she felt over realizing that the predators tracking her, which was something I loved, by the way, you know, her being a predator boogeyman, so to speak. And because, um, you know, that that's kind of the way people have always wanted them to go with Dutch, for example, you know, the predators coming back to find these legacy uh, survivors, but taking it, you know, a thousand times steps further with with Theta as being this murderous creature, the, you know, uh, the predator Baba Yaga kind of thing. I thought it was really cool and really interesting. But then her guilt over the fact that the predators were killing people coming after her or her reasonableness dealing with some of the those alien muggers shall we say, in, in the snow thing, as much as I was kind of like eh, on, on their yoda-esque uh dialogue and and the visuals you know i i love the way she treated them and it was refreshing so... to see some sentient non-human mm. yeah. species in this not Preferred just them the but there were also some primitive ones as well it's well nice you say you say primitive but they were populated yeah you say pr uh, primitive though but they were yeah, they running weapon, after her with laser weapons, weapons yeah. energy weapons yeah which was a nice kind of contrast to the predators very primitive yet mm. advanced um mm. presentation so that was something i really liked as well seeing these two alien um other alien creatures i hope somebody does um redo the river ghost at some point i want to see that mm. in something yeah i was going to make that point as well that it was cool to see these other sentient extraterrestrial species that she has interactions with um and that's a cool aspect of predator stories that take place more in the future right and given where the setup for the next one goes from what from what we know it's going to be very much in the vein of um predators the 2010 film um, with her getting in the middle of um, a predator hunt on the game preserve where these random people have been dropped there. So I do uh, hope like like with the river ghost uh, that we saw in predators, like it'll explore more of the other extraterrestrial species that are dropped on this game preserve. Like we, we get hints of them in the hunting camp, but really the river ghost is all we saw in uh, predators. So I did like that also the first aliens that we come across, there's, they don't understand each other. And, you know, and to them, she is another predator. So they, they chase her off. Um, well, because she has the mistake of, ha of hanging the helmet on her hip. And they yes, notice they, it, they realize. And like, well, the armor and everything. It's, it's, a, it's a mistaken identity. Although I did think it was weird. She, she, like, she literally says, God, I wish I could make you understand. And then just continues chatting to them. <laughs> she does, She's just put, it's like they're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It's the definition of insanity. But she should have tried, like, 
hand signals or, or something different. But I'm thinking, look, you know you can't talk to them, just turn around and head back. But she just keeps on saying, I'm a friend, I'm this, I'm that. It's... But yeah, that was one of those little things I go, oh, it's not a flawless story. There are moments where I just think, why is this character doing this? But um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those, it's, it's like, um, because um, they make them look like primitive things, very weedy arms and that. I thought it was going to be like that, like um, you know, in Galaxy Quest, where they all think, oh, those little tiny aliens. Miners, are better. And, not miners. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and they, they just eat the thing alive. And you go, oh, don't do that. I thought it was going to be something like that, so I was expecting some hostility there. But um, yeah, it's nice to see cultural misinterpretations being acknowledged in something like that because um yeah if you're going to get anywhere it's going to be something like that but um it also shows predators have their impact on other culture like we saw with ahab in the avp thing and he's going around different civilization on the search for engineers and um when you get to a story set in the future it's nice to see an extrapolation of what's basically on the trophy wall in Predator 2 because you know you so who's to say every a lot of fandom of often um, sorry often frequently says oh that T-Rex thing blah blah well how do you know those things weren't technology using species they're always assuming they're like big gladiator fights. What if those creatures were like humans? They have buildings and cars. We don't know. So it's nice to see these different ways because they're, they're alien civilizations. Use them to go through unusual circumstances, which this story does in that little snippet. But it's um, I hope to see more of that in the future. It's It's one of those... You know, like I said at the start, there's lots of little things that are like, yeah, that's cool. I like that. Hmm. And and this, there's a lot of little bits thrown into this where I'm like, I'd love to see a, a, a more focused take on that kind of thing. It's like with the later aliens we get, while I don't like the dialogue, um, the way they write the dialogue, you know, th there's implications there. You know, these guys are using human technology and are able to speak human a uh, human able to speak english um so there's like an implied sort of history there isn't there uh, between the species which is kind of one of those fascinating things and that was a cool i liked the reference to avp there with the hover bike probably not massively intentional it yeah. might just be entirely coincidental and i would have loved to have, them to have been the yamahas from avp but <laughs> i did get a little smile um with the hover bike yeah yeah, I have the same thought on that as well. Um, yeah. There's a danger that people start to assume, oh, it's Disney, therefore they're going to make it like Star Wars. But this stuff has come up in the franchise before. This is not new. And maybe it's people that were inspired by Star Wars, but so what? Ridley Scott was inspired by Star Wars when he did Alien. I mean, it all goes back there. It's not copying George Lucas. This is stuff that's been here before. What did we think about Theta then? Yeah, you know, I know I sort of kind of talked a little bit about her, but what what did you guys think about her as a character and her as a concept overall? I, I, I'm going to need... I can't really judge her because, like I said, this story is a very much self-contained... She's trying to hunt a character. She finds a character. Some stuff happens along the way. There's no real character development, but from what we saw of her, yeah, it's um, she feels like a plausible human character. It's just that, like you said, there is that sticking point of a lot of the stuff. Like it doesn't feel like it's it, she's earned. Like it's a character you'd think maybe if she said, "I've done three or four predators," and you kept on having flashbacks, and maybe you could play that into it. You could have said she's annoyed because some of her frustration comes from. By the time she's tracked them down, they're gone. They've, they've left their mark or something, and that's part of her frustration. But saying 26, it feels a bit overboard. And yet when you actually see her doing the fighting, it, it's 
doing nothing more than a, a generic human fight kind of thing. Um, as a character, I did like the stuff in, the, like, on the ship where she first goes back to the ship and she's having these conversations with the AI and all of that feels plausible. It feels like this is a real human being. But um, as a character, like, it's not like when you said about Machika, it's not like Machika. Machika had a lot more character development in her story. She went from that corporate office job thing and part of her thing was she needed to get dirt under her fingernails. And by the time she did that, things were happening in the background that just snowballed. She went through more of a Ripley-esque type thing. Here, this character hasn't got that, so I can't judge her as yeah, a character, she, but it's, from what I she saw, comes she's in got very, potential. She comes in very fully formed, doesn't she? Yeah. She she is very much of this, like, Amanda Ripley scavenger type, where she feels like that's a character who I could see saying those lines in a film, but I'm not like, I want more with Theta in it. Like, I'm not okay. at that state, but I'm like... Yeah, that was okay. She served the story. It was it was okay. It'd be nice to see some character development, but we haven't had enough here for me to really go, do I like her as a character? I like things that she did, but as a character, they could have replaced her with somebody else. It wouldn't have made much difference. Okay. I kind of agree with you, Eric. I, I feel like she has potential. Um, she was a compelling character for me in this. Um but I feel like where she goes is going to be a bit more critical because you look at some things about her life. She's had this revenge quest against the predators since she was a child, as well as she's had very little, if any real interaction with humans from childhood to adulthood. And now she has another human companion she's going off with. So it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out as well as her dynamic of hunting the predators. Now that she eventually got her revenge against the specific one that killed her parents. So, well, it, um, it needs some um, saying it does imply she has had some interact. We don't know about how much, but she, she does make the point that she's been to some ports oh, and right. she's got into altercations yeah. with people. Okay. So she so. must have had stopped off every so often, like Han Solo on his adventures, but not like she hasn't had a community, but she's yeah. been around human societies, I think. Gotcha. Yeah, you're, you're right, because she does mention that in the book, but still we it does make you wonder if she's had real any like extended time yeah with another person beyond just dealing with them you know so um i'm interested to see where she goes as as a character um i really like the action scenes with her the fight scenes i thought were really good and even some of like the ship chase scenes i thought were were cool as well they are always very dynamic you know and then we haven't really mentioned who was Kev Walker. Kev Walker was the artist and Frank DiMarta was the colorist, I think. Yeah, Frank DiMarta was the colorist. The artwork's actually really good in this. Um it does it does have a comic vibe to it, but I don't say that in a derogatory way. Um and I think it's you know, it's a lot stronger of a start than uh, Marvel's Alien was, you know, nothing in this makes me want to scream and and shout about copying other people's work, and yeah, there's a there's a lot of really dynamic sort of fight scenes in this one, and there's some gorgeous splash pages as well, mm -hmm. like the end the end of uh, the fifth issue, when the predator that she's hunting finally shows up, it looks amazing. Really good, and it's a really good shoot use of the silhouettes and and um, like clouds and stuff like that. You know, um, the predator disappearing into smoke and and bits and bobs like that that I thought I think work really well. Might not be my favorite predator art, uh, predator comic for artwork, but it's certainly a very solid and good looking um, predator comic. Yeah, it it feels like a comic we might have seen under Dark Horse. It doesn't feel like a, a huge departure or anything like that. Um, the the character of the ship's captain that she comes across, I was like, is he going to be on her side eventually? Is he not? And then he's just kind of blames her for everything, and he gets immediately killed after that. What do you guys <laughs> think about that? 
I loved him get you know because he straight up says to her, "Look, if you get my people killed, I'm gonna fucking have you." And I loved that he actually went or tried to go there. I was like, okay, man of his word, tries to go there. And I, a lot of things feel a bit cut short in the comic, and that was certainly one of those things that did because he immediately takes some wrist blades through the back. But just just that he did the flip that he promised her he would, I was very satisfied with. Did you guys pick up on the Prey references? Mm-mm. They um on one one panel I noticed they this they mentioned about having records since around yeah. the seventeen I mean, and it also could have been a or two reference. Yeah, I took that yeah. more as a Flintlock kind of reference. And, and also, uh, I, I don't know if it was deliberate, but I did realise it's another character with a big beard who's going against the main female character. Yeah. So I don't know if that was on purpose, but I thought mm, maybe oh, that is bad. one hell of a beard he has. <laughs> yeah. Really full on. There's, there's, there's not much to him though, and no, not, like I really enjoyed issue five to see her to see Theta in more of a vulnerable and human position. But you know, it's it's still one of those early doors kind of things. You know, we only get a little bit with this character who seems like he's going to be um, a recurring main character going forwards, and the captain serves as an antagonist for an issue and a half, kind of maybe. I, I didn't understand his threat motivation because um, this is one of those points I thought was a bit of a plot hole because he says, oh no, all your because she said, well, leave me with the ship and this data so I can go on my way. And he says, oh no, all of it's company product property. But I think just copy the data. You don't have to erase the data. Just, okay, just leave her with that. Just copy the data. Just But he's using it as a threat. And then he's moving on to this whole thing of, no, no, you are an now. now. He's, he's getting a bit moustache twirly. I, I felt that stuff was a little contrived. Whereas it could have been, they just need to nurse her back to health. The ship is decades old. It's probably yeah. worth more in scrap than property by now. Especially with it all already so, so damaged. Um, they could have just gone with a, we found you. Oh, who are you sort of thing? No, we're just going to get you on your feet because you're a, a human being. We're here to help. And then the predator comes in. But they're trying to introduce this friction there. But it, it doesn't feel like it needed to be there, that interpersonal conflict. I know there's a narrative point to it, like you kind of need it in a story, but it wasn't necessary in this story. They could have just gone with the predators, especially with them pointing out that, yeah, we've, heard about predators we're not sure what, what that they could have used that as like a pooling resources thing like with um royce and isabel in predators once isabel says no i've seen these things they pull start pooling their knowledge it could have been a chance for that um whereas it's uh no you stay there you're now company product property and it's uh didn't work I, for me i hope they don't fall into the trap of trying to make our star industries Wayland Utani. Wayland Utani. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, they did have a point about like we have to watch the the larger mega corporations that are trying to buy us all up. So yeah. I, I was waiting like, oh, for them to be. A, yeah, I was waiting for that to be a little like Wayland Utani. Wink. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just I don't want them to do that evil mega corporation thing. Hmm. I mean, this. they weren't even. This is what I didn't. They said, "Oh, this we're just a recon ship." And then he's when one panel he says about um well you know we we can't oh yeah that's it she says I need to get back on my feet or something and then he says well about um we'll take you back to Earth and then he says well that's not my decision and then you know, like a couple of pages later he says well no we're gonna but I can say on behalf of the company we're gonna take your ship blah blah and it felt a I don't know if the writer forgot in one panel or it was a different draft of the story, but it felt a little contradictory in one point saying, well, that's that's above my pay grade, and then saying, I'm going to speak on behalf of the company and I'm not just a captain of a small recon. He should have been like um, like Dallas in Alien, where he's just the captain of that ship. He's working for a company, but like he's just out in space. He shouldn't be... He's like Burke, almost, by the end of it, and it's... Well, it just felt very like it, they they didn't clarify it character wise what he's meant to be there doing. It is kind of interesting that he does try and justify like why they need the ship and the information, and he tells her like, "Oh, the company's in trouble these days." 
But at the same time, Aaron, like you have to question if he was really justified in like, if you get my people killed, um, you know, I'll, I'll take it out on you, but it's like his people were already getting killed at that point. And she makes the point to the scientist um, that brought her food. And that was how she initially escaped. He's like, yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't blame you for, for what you did uh, because I, I know you were saying like it was just because the predators were coming and she's like, the only reason we're in this situation is because you didn't just let me go and face these things that I told you were after me. And so now, now it's on all of us right now. So, I mean, they didn't listen to her. I mean, that's an entirely fair point as well, but it was still to see him actually just make good on his word. I thought it was kind of, yeah, okay. That's, that's yeah. funny. It was interesting I, how the predator had the little spider bot self-destruct yeah. thing you know what i love i really liked that sequence because it started off being like we were going to get this really awesome kind of intelligent fight between theta and this predator you know she she's saying to those the crew it's like look i you know from my knowledge of the predators this is what we need to be able to you know to to fight him we need the space to move we can't take it on in tight um, corridors but we've also still got to you know make sure it can't get anywhere and the predator sort of like takes one look and goes eh, nah fuck off i know what you're doing and takes a step back and throws a bomb in there so i'm like okay this this guy's got a bit of um a bit of a head on him i don't get why it needed to be a robot creature it should have just been a well, it, grenade it, it, <laughs> it could have been any, any manner of predator gadgets yeah. Yeah. it could have been any manner of design but you know just that little moment i thought was cool and and it was and it was a nice moment for Theta as well to sort of show, yes, she did know what she was talking about. But the, was that the, the panel where there was that predator dialogue reference where it was, you know, come on, kill me now? Bit of narrated prose in the background. No, no, that's. I know she said it at some point. She, yeah. she's, she's talking internally at that point. Yeah. she's like, oh, I fucked up. I might as well just be an animal lying here going. Yeah. Come kill on, me kill now. me now, yeah. But yeah. you could tell it was a that was it, a, a homage done in the right way because yeah, it, it didn't intrude in the story. It wasn't yeah. intrusive, exactly. It was just a nice yeah. little, yeah. So I I did like that idea, but then the fight itself was very anticlimactic because the, mm. the 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 kill basically comes because oh shit, the predators just stuck its knife in the floor a little bit and you don't even have a oh shit moment it's just the pan- the next panel's like swish no more head for yeah. the predator um which i think was another one of my issues with the you know the thematic feel of this book it didn't feel like predator as a franchise there, there was a wrist rocket cameo from there predator there yeah. But I, I, yeah i i mean it didn't feel like predator yeah. in that it wasn't about you know we don't see the predators fail because of over overconfidence no. and, or underestimating and we don't see the humans really win due to smarts there there's one moment in that in the comic that i really fucking liked where it was theta succeeded because of a smarts and that was when you know she killed the predator with the engine i loved that moment i thought mm. that would have been a really cool sort of finale to some other a four issue run of a hunt in her past that we should have been seeing, but yeah, a lot of the fights in this are just well, it's like fights. the equivalent of Dutch with the log, it was that kind yeah. of like a yeah. trap, yeah. So, I, I think that's where the, the series does fall a little flat, you know, it's not about human ingenuity so much as it is just cool panels of uh, predators and um, a human dressed as a predator swinging. Uh, swords around so that was one of the elements of this that i i did think was not quite there not quite yeah, understanding it's, predator. the thing that was i'm um, in hindsight you mentioning that it does make me think that the one of the um if you can talk about like a problem with the the arc the run as a whole it is based around the prey turning things on head and hunting down predators but I don't think there was any point any predator she faced off with where we got a focus on an actual hunt. 
like the the actual stalking, the actual which the best predator films give emphasis mm-hmm. to. You never even got so much as the predator using its its voice emulation thing. It did or the clip. Up, apart from the yeah, ships, which you seem sometimes... surprised by, which yeah. I thought was a little. Eh, well, it, how are you like... surprised that the predator ships can cloak? Yeah, and but there were you never really got to the the essence of a hunt, which I think if you can do that in comic form, you've got a proper predator story because that's that's the theme you should try to aim for. Um, but here it was. I mean, there were some interesting stuff like the predator ship does down her ship, and you do wonder yourself, well, why isn't it killing her? And she does mention, and it made sense, there's no honour in shooting us out of the sky. He wants to take the battle to the ground. And I thought, ah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that... yet there are other points, like in her history, about when it kills her parents, um, she kills it. Like, First of all, it holds up her mother by the throat. It takes off its mask for no reason whatsoever. And then she, the little girl, uses a sword to hit it, and but then it just wanders away. I think. I think realistically, confusing. it should have killed them both. But... I think that's confusing art because I'm fairly sure I, it's the mum that does it, and she just sort of picks up the sword after the fact. I thought the kid was holding it. Yeah, the, I thought the, the kid, kid does. does it too. No, so hang on, I'm getting. I'm trying to get to the page. Um, I'm pretty sure Fater is a child, unless I was looking at it wrong. So Fater's, yeah, it's it's the artwork. It just looks a little different. Okay. So um, still, it still takes the mask off for no good reason. Yeah. But so um, that's that's the mum. Oh, okay. It's just yeah. Look, look, she's holding it in that panel. Yeah. So she, she picks it up at the bottom. Oh, yeah. It's because of the hairstyles. It's yeah, got it's like the, the daughter's hairstyles hairstyle. are very different. They've uh, mixed okay. up the hairstyles. So she picks it up after her mother uses no. it. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh, that, right. That's, that's, after. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it really looks like the kid used it. Yeah, but then it wanders. Yeah, it just wanders away and it. Yeah, it's... <sighs> See, I, I wish. Yeah. Because I think that the, they did it obviously so that. They could make this the identifying factor of it being the predator with the three mandibles. That's the whole reason that happened. Yeah. When it should have been some other sort of identifying mark, because even as I was yeah. ringing it, uh, read ringing it, even as I was reading it, I was like, eh, if it, so many of them could have had injuries yeah, yeah, like this in I the past. That or it, it, uh, the thing I was thinking was, how does she know it hasn't regrown it or put a prosthetic one on? I mean, it, she could yeah, have that's... already killed the one she. It should have been some dialogue like. Maybe one of the ones I've already taken out. I don't know, but I can't satisfy this urge. Well, that I've got there was a bit of dialogue where like she's that. like, "It didn't move like that one, or something." Yeah, like but that. she recognizes it's that style. particular one. Yeah, but and she's done like twenty six of them, and <laughs> I think I think maybe Kev thought about this because the artwork mm. um, depict. I mean, this is the cover, so it's obviously not Kev, but the cover here and the artwork in the comic depicts a very sort of like leaf shape patterning hmm. on the forehead and that that's in the interior artwork as well so it's like kev maybe did think okay let's add a little something extra yeah. on here as well uh, and i wish they'd have focused more on something like hmm. that um, i mean but wasn't speak- that the same mandible that wolf or the one in prey gets taken off yes i don't know if that's again another reference to modern right yeah yeah. Same Speaking as of... Broken Tusk? Uh, again, yeah, there are more than one Predator who have <laughs> taken off. But speaking of prosthetics as well, mm. I really like Theta had one, um, like the prosthetic leg, because I was like, okay, this speaks to the history that she's had, and it might also speak to her proficiency. Maybe there's more parts of her that are robotic. And the scarring know. on the face. She's not a pretty... Usually the temptation is to do... Um, a woman make her look attractive, but she looked like she's been through some stuff with the scarring on the face. Even the, the short hair yeah, and stuff. So she's not prettied herself up. She looks like um a veteran of So I liked that. Um uh, but again that's that's like kind of one of the things where I just lament this <sighs> this should have been a first arc thing, you know, it should have ended mm. with her losing her her foot or yeah. her leg and yeah. this kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, and it, we it, never it, found out what because I was expecting off that very first fight, and I was expecting one of them to be a human in Predator stuff. 
I was expecting it to be revealed on my next issue. Okay, this is how she came across the armor, or it's not actual predator stuff. It's her making her own version of it and using their technology. Never clarified because I was expecting. Oh, they're not actually dreadlocks. They're something. Never clarified. It's literally she's just take a sawn off the dreadlocks, glued them in, and she's then she's just done a Nolan, and it wasn't. That could have been some interesting character development on what happened in her background to make her start su- doing that. I'm surprised we didn't get more flashbacks, to be honest. Mm. I was kind of expecting a lot more detailing those early encounters that she had throughout the run. And yeah, there's none really, aside from just her very initial encounter with her, her family got slaughtered. Mm-hmm. Which in itself, you know, some of that seemed a little unpredator like because there was not all of the crew the expedition were armed from what the artwork depicted. So that was a little bit eh. But I thought the, very, the ones very that we saw part. get killed were but a, I could a be... good a good chunk of them are. You know, we not see all these of them. big ass laser guns, but no, not all of them oh, are depicted okay. as being armed. Fair enough. And like again, speaking towards the predators being underpowered, it's kind of one of those risks of taking it too far into the future because obviously mm. they've got these big ass awesome laser gun things, which <laughs> very simplistic in style, but I actually really liked actually. But then, you know, this yeah. One of the other predators is taken by surprise by a bunch of them nailing it with these big laser guns that basically blow it to bits. Which, yeah, it's, there's a lot of anticlimactic dealing uh, endings for the predators in this run. And I really hope that's something that the next arc avoids, especially since we do already seem to be having that limited number of predators in it. I think I think the solicitations all specifically called out that there was going to be three of them. So I hope. I hope um, Ed Bryson, the the writer, makes them a bit more resilient in this next run, shall we say. Well, it was interesting because um, Feta also makes the point like she's never seen Predators work together until a certain point happens in this comic. She's like, I didn't know they could cooperate. And so having that whole like hunting trio dynamic in the next one could be interesting. Yes. Yeah. That might be something she has to, you know, she doesn't know everything which is is very much made explicit so to see her sort of deal with the fact that there's more for her to learn about these creatures um, could be an interesting approach to take with it yeah uh, i i liked the ship i liked the sandpiper i did i did think it was very alien yeah, yeah. it looked like looking. an alien ship yeah reminded me of uh, various nostromo kind of shapes to it which was cool I do wish, um, I do wish with the predator ships would have been that um, predator one shuttle though. Mm-hmm. It, it did, it did the thing of going for the more recent and I... more readily available reference material. Okay, so there's the that reminds me, Eric. You you were asking me if anything looked uh, overly referenced, and yeah, the oh, first yes. predator ship she comes across, I believe that was based on concept art from the predator. But the other two ships, they're the smaller, like, kind of fighter predator ships that are pursuing our ships later. I didn't recognize those, and I thought those looked pretty cool. I think they were very much supposed to be the predator kind of style ships. Yeah. Well, the the interior on that, there's a... Was when definitely she the first predator. first defeats it, yeah, and she sees that trophy wall. That looks very... Um, I, just, yeah, I just want the more clean. Two. I want the Predator 2 interiors yeah. back and I want the Predator 1 exterior back. I, I, miss, I miss those styles. It's It's got... I mean, it's very much like that Medicomp thing they have on there. It's that segmented crustacean look. Um, they have got power because they feel tribal and ancient. They, they just have that aesthetic about it and it makes you wonder how long have they been around. But it's... There's a... There's a psychological impact to those interiors um i'm I'm sure part of that is because when you hear the the alan silvestri music which accompanies them that gives emphasis too but um yeah i'm I'm with you i want to see that return it's it's been too long it shouldn't be clean because the clean look feels human yeah, I know it's not uh, human, but it feels human. It, and it, it feels a bit more see... generic in, yeah. in look, and I, I honestly do think that most of it just tends to be the availability of reference material. Like, I doubt in the in the script that um, Ed Bryson specifically called out the Predator interior. It was just Predator interior ship, you know. Um, 
and it is just how easy it is to find like those concept arts or those screenshots from the movies and stuff like that, which is a shame. You know, it is a shame. Well, you I don't just... need to just just say, um, you know, put some descriptions in about like it feels like Aztec fucked a car or so, something. Some weird. You can do a text <laughs> description. You don't need to say reference scene, I... time scale, or whatever. Just say it. It has a feel of and do a description, and then that that's it. That's all. Like, but just... the artists can go wild. Yeah, I just don't think that, that perhaps that's a concern that the writers probably have, shall mm. we say. No. If we had but, a wish list, we'd like it back, that's mm, all. Yeah, definitely. But did you like the idea of her being this predator boogeyman, of being this thing that they were tracking to try and get rid of? I, I liked her having the idea that that's what she's causing, but I think it was missing a character, especially when she meets the other human girl. One of them should have said, well, how do you know it hasn't had the opposite effect? And she should have been like, what? And it should have been someone saying, like, in Predator 2 with Harrigan, it's making you look like the top trophy to be. They want to find you. They don't want to avoid you. They want to find you. It should have been something like and that. And that could have gone back to the thing, well, she's realising, oh, they're hunting well, me now. Don't they kind of say that anyway, even though she does think she's the boogeyman? You know, because of I don't the, recall. The I might have missed that... it then, but that's. I mean, that was the interpretation I got that yeah. was because of her status as this killer. You know, it's like you said, she had become a top. Yeah, um, she's become a, a top. She's made herself a target. She's not had the effect she was hoping because she says she she hopes they wake up in the middle of the night and have these sweats. And I'm thinking, yeah. predator psychology isn't human psychology. It will be <laughs> they're they're Klingon. You know, they want, oh, you, you think you can take us on? Fine. Get up there. <laughs> but that's not how a predator's going to think. That's... But I liked her having the assumption because she hasn't had much in the way of life experience. She's had hunting experience, but she's not. A predator would, like, laugh at her if she says, oh, you thought me that come on then, and predator be translation, you'd be, what? <laughs> <That wouldn't. laughs> I liked her um, again. Just sort of a random note from my notes here. You know, just talking about her experience with dealing with the predators. When we see her going up against that predator in the third issue, when it is in the close quarters, and she uses the opportunity to take out its shoulder cannon, I thought hmm. that was a cool little moment as well. It's like know know your enemy, know know what strengths they're going to want to use. So I thought that was that was a particularly yeah. nice moment. I like that, yeah, um, uh, also about her, the we were talking about, well, identifying things. It did take her axe that she'd lost. So that was the other way to confirm it was a predator. But it was, it was um, following her as well. I was hoping to see, because like with Nolan in Predators, and the idea is that she's had these successes because she's used their technology, but you didn't really see her use much in the way of fancy gadgets what she was using it was, was all very melee. primitive yeah. yeah so i was like even if it was like vision modes or something like yeah. maybe she'd have had some way to tap into their network because you saw in predators they've got like wireless communication with their ship so maybe a clever way of doing it was that's how she's tracking them down she's figured out a, a signal or something nothing like that it was just like oh i found well, you okay let's have a fist fight I mean, to, to to be fair, they do sort of allude to them deciphering like the predator's hunting routes, which was another. Yeah, thing she has to, well. the red things she has to physically yeah. dislodge from the ship. Yeah. So I thought that was a cool moment with the idea of them. <laughs> it almost Black it was boxes. almost. Well, no, I mean more the idea that they have these prescribed routes, and when one of them dies, somebody yeah. else is next in the waiting list to be given this specific route, which. <sighs> Kind of made me chuckle in a little bit of a predator bureaucracy kind of way, but <laughs> yeah. just just in terms of her sort of using like a these... ledger and then marking down yeah. Dave's next. <laughs> exactly, but like ju just the idea that that was how she was figuring out planets that the predators yeah. were likely. To I think if she'd have she'd have remembered oh something like oh like migration routes for animals on Earth sort of thing, it, that would have made more predator sense of it but yeah <laughs> thinking of it like you mentioned yeah. yeah but i mean that 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 was pretty much the only time we really saw them 
using the predator technology mm. um i do agree with you you know it would have been nice to see more we'll see Something. any sorry really you know you using the shoulder cannons or the, or the cloak or stuff like that Something, yeah. because you know that was one of the cool things of, of the predator even if the predator bun, um, you know bungled the actual execution of it and it's something i wish the expanded universe would play more with you know it's what hunting grounds did cool was having that plasma rifle you know that that was a very nice touch using the predator technology yeah, in that game the predator had both humans using predator tech and predators using human weapons as well yeah. so any other specific elements um, any likes or dislikes about this particular arc that you guys want to talk about i think what i liked about the uh, talked about some problems with the thing but again going back to positivity positivity as an arc i like how it how it flowed it felt like it had some nice inertia it felt mm -hmm. like things flowed nicely into it i said it was more of a gauntlet run there's nothing wrong with a gauntlet run aliens is a gauntlet run the original predator is a gauntlet run there's nothing wrong with it this this felt like a, it had a nice rhythmic flow to it i did feel like when she met up with the other humans as i said it kind of felt like a bit of a stumbling block there but um it's it flowed nicely that's what i liked about this run it felt like it, it's one thing flowed into like cups of water glasses of water they flowed into one and then by the end as i say i felt like yeah i don't mind i'll, I'll go back and reread this at some point it's got that nice inertia feel to it what about you adam any final thoughts yeah i definitely thought there was more to like than dislike here um i it's really hard to pinpoint what i didn't like beyond just what we were saying aaron that that where she is doesn't feel earned yet as a character um maybe we'll see more of her past and flashbacks in the next issue but overall i'd say it's a, a fairly solid start um a bit kind of like a straightforward revenge quest thing but done well uh but but yeah i i hope the next one kind of dives into some more interesting themes and aspects of the of the predator universe um but i i still feel like person did uh, a great job with this one like solid start again much better than alien so so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing where this goes what do you guys think about the uh cover art because this series got a lot of um cover art both the the standard and variants and uh i think a lot of it has been cool some of it's just been weird <laughs> um but uh yeah overall i think the cover arts have been quite good i only i don't hunt down the variants i'll be honest um we were, were sort of talking about that before we started you know adam's part of the problem with his four <laughs> different variant cover arts of issue one you know that that's not the kind of collector i am but uh, i think i've got all the standard covers um adam you're gonna have to look at the names of the, st the standard cover artists here but yeah they're all good you know some nice sort of references to other ones you know there's a very sort of machiko vibe to the standard cover for mm. number three, you know, with her lowering the predator helmet down over her. This one has Very... that same leaf pattern on the head that you were talking yeah. about. So yeah, all good. I'm, I can't argue with those. It's like I said, you know, there's lots of really cool splash pages in this, and lots of really cool moments of artwork, and those are the kind of ones I'd be quite happy to order to hang up on the wall along with Tristan's prints and stuff like that. Re yeah, I agree with you guys. You know, it was a solid start. There, there were issues with it and things that made it. Uh, I'm kind of like, oh, I wish they'd have done this. I'd have wished they'd have done that, D taken a different approach. But none that make me want to, you know, go and slap <laughs> uh, Ed Bryson, like some of the things that we had with um, the Marvel Alien um, arcs. So I'm quite keen to see where Ed goes with the second volume. You know, this this um, hunting preserve concept. You know, I'm, I'm really excited to see that be revisited, actually, because, you know, anybody who listens to this should know I'm very much a big fan <gasps> of Predators. Very much a fan of Predators. So i am really excited to see that concept revisited because it's just not something that the expanded universe has done you know we had it in forever midnight but we blocked that out our memory that book does not exist so um i'll be very 
keen to see how it goes down. Yeah, but, it's it's a good first stepping stone. It's not, as I say, it's not flawless, but if the rest of them at least come up to this standard, if not polish and get better, that's even better. But at least it, they come up to at least this standard, it'll be nice. It's it's um if they if it's starting as it means to go on, yeah, it's um, I certainly don't have the same amount of problems I did with the um the alien run, as you said. This is the better of the two series so far. I just hope we do get more backstory with Theta. You know, mm. I want to see that progression. You know, I want to see that character journey, those stumbles, her losing her leg and, and earning the knowledge and skill and experience that we're given here. Um, so, yeah, I really, really do want to see that going forwards. Adam, do you want to shout out? Real quick, when does the trade paperback come out? You know? I was I was just looking for it and I can't find it. I'm sure they've announced it, but I, I can't see the yeah, date for it. Probably can't be more than a, a few months, but you know what it's called, right, Aaron? Day of the Hunters. Day of the Hunters. Day of the Hunter, right. sorry. Day of the Hunter. And then the next arc of Predator should be starting February, right? Probably. No, I think there's a I think there's a break actually. Is there? Um, oh. Yeah, we hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. No, it doesn't look like there was a out oh, March. March, sorry. March. Okay, so one month break, yeah. And the current Alien just released, uh, or is about to release if it hasn't issue five. So I think that has one more to go, and that'll be concluding in February. Mm -hmm. um, so far, what I've seen of that has been encouraging. Um, over the first two arcs, yeah. How, how do you feel about that there? Our artwork is definitely significantly better, and some interesting bits with the story. But there's also some bits where it's like, eh. But we could talk about that one in a month or two. Don't worry. Do you want to pimp out the socials? Yes. So you can find us on all the major social channels: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, if you just search AVP Galaxy or Alien vs. Predator Galaxy, you're sure to find us. You can also find us on our main website uh, where we have our message boards if you'd like to discuss things with other fans, including us, as well as uh, a number of features such as editorials, interviews, and all that good stuff. So be sure to check us out if you're new here. Um, and if you like what we do on YouTube, we're trying to grow our channel, so we always do appreciate a like. Or if you want to see more of what we do, uh, feel free to subscribe. That's where the cool kids hang out. <laughs> Our forums, bonus, mm. and mm. and on this and on the YouTube streams, there's plenty of cool kids on there. Sunday nights, if you're in the UK, Sunday midday for the east for the states. Yep, brunch time for me. Brunch. Sacrifice well, my brunch for our live streams. <laughs> That's fair. It is it is appreciated very much, Adam. Thank you. Anyway, thank you everybody for listening or watching. This has been Corporal Hicks. Ridge Top. Xenomorphine. Get into the chopper. Or the hoverbike. Oh, the hoverbike. Yes.